What's up y'all, Alvin here, and today we're gonna do a fly box deep dive. I'm gonna show you all my bass flies. <laughs> I tell the good jokes. <laughs> Okay, so these are all my bass flies. I have my boxes labeled and uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five boxes. These are not exactly what's inside of them. I do not have any snake flies. <laughs> no flies that look like snakes, but this box is called the snake box. And uh, that's because I have a lot of my streamers. These are mostly either unweighted, slow sinking, or maybe even diving bugs. So let's dig in. So I call it the snake box because you may have watched some of my videos, my fly tying videos, and uh, I tied this little fly called a snake. Uh, it's my simplified version, so it was much more complicated originally. This is my super easy to tie version. I do believe I made a video on tying it. I'll link that uh, up here somewhere. <laughs> All right, so what else do I have in my snake box beside the snake? Um, I've got quite a few game changers. Um, these are some mini game changers tied by my buddy Wes McNew. Um, most of these flies, Wes McNew owns Onion Creek Fly Company, and most of these flies I tied, but some of the more complicated ones I did not tie. So I've got a lot of my own patterns in here, but I've also got quite a few patterns like the Game Changer, Blaine Chocolates Fly, or this is one of my kind of go-to big fish flies. This one is called the uh, Swingin' D. This is uh, Mike Schultz pattern. You may uh, recognize that one. Mike Schultz uh, did a video. We fished with Mike Schultz and a couple of his guides earlier this year. And this is one of his big uh, smallmouth patterns. Got all kinds of random stuff, but these are mostly, like I said, unweighted, slow sinking uh, or diving streamers. So. That's the snake box. <laughs> okay, moving along to the next one. This one's pretty obvious, crawfish box. What's in the crawfish box, you might ask? Well, crawfish patterns. Um, once again, kind of a mix of flies that I tied and flies that I buy. One of my favorite crawfish patterns is this gully craw. This is a pattern that's available from Orvis. And I like this one because it's pretty heavily weighted. It's got double dumbbell eyes on it. And uh, it's got these cool claws, lots of rubber legs. And we catch a lot of bass on this, especially during the cooler months. So this is probably my go-to fly from uh, late fall through the winter and into the spring. Um, got some other crawfish patterns. This is one that I tied. Uh, made a video tying this one. This one's just kind of a rabbit strip crawfish. Doesn't look like much when it's dry, but when it gets wet, it's pretty nice. Um, I'll leave a link to the video up there. <laughs> Some of the other crawfish patterns I like. This is Pat Cohen's Jiggy Craw. I mean, this thing has got some crazy action uh, and I like the pre-cut bodies. You can buy the bodies in time yourself, or you can just buy these directly from Pat. And I actually believe Orvis carries these as well. Um, and they're available in different colors. Another one that I tie, uh, and this one is uh, called the, uh, the Ghetto Crawl. This is uh, <laughs> quite a mouthful. So this is kind of more of a, a big fish fly. Um, I don't know if this is available for sale, um, but you can definitely tie these yourself, the patterns online. That's how I learned to tie it. Moving on along. Next box in the pile is the popper box. <laughs> lots and lots of poppers. So as a lot of you probably know, my favorite fly to throw for bass and a lot of other fish 
uh, poppers. I have got a ton of poppers. So let's dig into this. Of course, plenty of my uh, Dito poppers. Um, this guy here, and I have tied this one for quite a while. This was an effort to make a fly that was easy to cast, but made a lot of commotion. And uh, initially I called it the flip flop popper because I was carving the body or the head um, out of an old flip flop that I found, but I found a much easier way to make this fly with foam, flat foam. Uh, flat foam, super glue, and some type of tail material, and the eyes. And I like to put rattle eyes on them. Um, but once again, there's a video on how to tie this one. I'll link it up there. <laughs> uh, but this is probably my go-to foam popper pattern. Um, I do still use some of the uh, hard foam, I mean the hard body poppers. You know, these guys, kind of just the old classic uh, hard body popper. Uh, another one of my uh, patterns that I like, um, not really a popper, but it is a top water, so I'll put it in here, but this is my frog pattern. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got a video of me tying the frog. Uh, I'll, yes, I do, I'll do. I'll put a link up there. But uh, I've caught a lot of big bass on this frog pattern, you know, tied with, uh, with the weed guard, without a weed guard. Um, these are the Pat Cohen frog legs. Uh, I like these, but I also just tie this just using a rabbit strip for a tail. But yeah, that's my popper box. Um, I've got these poppers in all different sizes, different colors. I think if I had to just say what was my go-to, it'd be this guy here, just a green one with a white rabbit strip tail. Caught a ton of bass on that one. Next is worms and leeches. So this is uh, think woolly boogers, think weighted streamer patterns. Um, surprisingly, I don't have a lot of these flies and I don't use a ton of them, but basically uh, this kind of stuff. So anything, uh, usually darker color, usually some type of worm, leech. Uh, this is a uh, one of my go-to's. It's just a uh, body fur and a rabbit strip tail. Um, do have some big uh, buggers, you know, lead-eyed, rubber leg, woolly bugger, stuff like that. This is what I'm calling a leech. Um, let's see, anything really interesting in here? Lead eyes, weed guard, rabbit strip. That's, you know, kind of the go-to, super simple. But, as I say, this is not my favorite because if we're throwing this stuff, usually means fishing's tough. We're having to get down deep and move slow. And, uh, you know, it works, but it's probably not my favorite way to catch bass or other fish for that matter. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Oh, yeah. And don't forget the rabbit strip leech. Got a video tying those. I'll link that up there. <laughs> One more box. This is my Clouser box, not marked. Um, on a side note, all these boxes will fit in one Yeti Go box. So I've got a couple of videos on my on my Yeti Go boxes. I'll link those up there. Um, but you can get four of these larger Plano boxes and then one of these skinny ones in one half of the go box. So you can get a lot of flies in there, a lot of other gear as well. Clouser box. <laughs> Nothing fancy about that one. Just a bunch of clousers, uh, different colors. Yeah, and, oh, and a few Crelexes. So I, I have uh, also made a video, uh, a couple of videos on tying the Crelex. Uh, link that up there and tying a clouser. Link that up there as well. Lots of shark truce, lots of olive. Um, like I said, the Crelex is in some dark colors. Uh, love tying clousers in um, gray and white. You know, really good bait fish imitation. Sometimes we'll get crazy and tie them in some brighter colors, but for the most part, kind of stick to the basics. Uh, shark truce in white, olive in white, gray in white. But 
like I said, we'll get crazy sometimes <laughs> and tie yellow and white. And I've actually caught quite a few fish on the yellow and white. All right, y'all, you asked for it, there you go. All my bass flies. This is everything I have in my Yeti Go box. Like I said, you can check out those videos and see how I have these boxes packed. Once again, I wanna thank everybody for tuning in and watching the video. I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that notification bell so you'll find out next time I post a video. And in the meantime, good luck on the water.